guys, it's Sakali, and this is Falcon Notes. Today we're going to be going over the last and final last and final unit of AP Human Geography, which happens to be Unit 7, Economic Development and Industrialization Vocabulary. Now we went over the measures of economic development, Rastas Modernization Model, Women in the World, Comparative Advantage, Sustainable Development, the Industrial Revolution, Industrial Locations, and Outsourcing. <sighs> yeah, so those are the units I'm going to be covering today. This is going to be my last video on AP Human Geography, unless you guys want to see something else. That'll be awesome. But to start, let's go into the measures of economic development. Now, the HDI, which is Human Development Index, is the indicator of level of development for each country. It's constructed by, it's constructed by the United Nations. Of It's constructed through combining income, literacy, education, and life expectancy. Uh, gross national product is the total value of all goods and services by a country's economic uh, economy in a given year. It includes all goods and services produced by corporations and inv individuals of a country, whether or not they are located within the country. Now, most developed country is a country that has progressed relatively far along a uh, continuum of development. A least developed country is a country that is relatively early stages in the process of economic development. Economic indicators are development indicators based on a country's economic production or how much it produces and what it produces and how it produces. An export processing zones are uh, ones established by many countries in the periphery and semi-periphery which uh, offer favorable tax, uh, regulatory, regulatory, and trade arrangements to attract foreign trade. These things are like Mexican maquilador plants that have a good, tr uh, a good tax rate and stuff like that. That's why they are favored. Now moving on to the Rostow modernization model. Rostow's modernization model is a linear theory of development that developed countries go through a common pattern of structural change. Stage one is their traditional society. Stage two is traditional stage uh, preconditions for takeoff. Step three is takeoff. Step four is drive to maturity. And step five is high mass consumption. It explains the development of experience of Western countries and is a general model for others. Uh, women in the world, we talked about it through uh, a documentary that we watched. NGOs or non-governmental organizations are international organizations that operate outside the influence of governments. Microcredit programs are programs that provide small loans to poor people, especially women, to encourage development of small businesses. <sighs> now we move on to comparative advantage. A comparative advantage is the ability of an individual or group to carry out a particular economic activity more efficiently than another activity. Sustainable development is development providing for the needs of the, pres the present generation without diminishing the options of future generations. It's also the name given to the emergent school of thought in the 1990s. Ecotourism is, eco is a form of tourism involving visiting fragile, pristine, and relative, relatively undisturbed natural areas. It's intended as a low-impact and often small-scale alternative to standard commercial or tourism or mass tourism. Now we move on to the Industrial Revolution. The cottage industri industry is managed, uh, manufactured based in homes rather than factories and commonly found prior to the Industrial Revolution. Uh, Fordism is form of mass production in which each work is assigned one specific task to perform repeatedly. The Industrial Revolution is a series of improvements in industrial technology that transformed the process of manufacturing goods. An assembly line is an efficient manufacturing process in which components are added to a product in a sequential matter, manner using optimal planned logistics and resulting in extremely fast pr production, like just-in-time production. Post-Fordism is adoption by companies of flexible work rules such as the allocation of workers to teams that perform a variety of tasks. Now we move on to industrial locations. Least cost theory is model by uh, is a model by Alfred Weber according to which the location of manufacturers 
manufacturing establishing establishments is determined by the minimis, minimization of three critical expenses: labor, tradition, uh, transportation, and agglomeration. We looked through this in detail, where we saw where exactly would you put something uh, if you get given these prices, you're given the prices of labor and transportation and things like that. Agglomeration is a process of clustering and concentrating people or activities, uh, like manufacturing uh, manufacturing plants being close together. A bulk gaining industry is an industry in which the final product weighs more or, or comprises a greater volume than the inputs. A bulk reducing industry is an industry in which the final product weighs less or comprises a lower volume than is input. A location a location theory is a logical attempt to ex, uh, to explain the locational pattern of an economic activity and the matter in which its producing areas are interrelated. Uh, site factors are location factory, uh, factors related to the cost of factors of production inside the plant such as land, labor, and capital. Situa situational factors are location factors related to the transportation of materials to and from the factory. Finally, we talk about outsourcing. Outsourcing is the decision by a corporation to turn over much of the responsibility for production to a third party, usually overseas. The International Division of Labor is a spatial division of labor which occurs when the process of production is no longer confined to national er economies. Under the old international division of production or of labor until the or around 1970s, underdeveloped areas were incorporated into the world economy uh, principle, uh, world economy principally as supri suppliers of minerals and agricultural commodities. However, as developing econ uh, economies are merged into the world economy, more production ha takes place in these economies. Finally, globalization is the expansion of economic, political, and cultural processes to the point that they become global in scale and impact. We've talked about a lot of globalization, especially with migration and population and culture, and uh, now this. So, globalization is obviously a very important topic that we need to talk about. Well, there you have it, guys. That's the end of Unit 7. It was a lot shorter than most of the things because... Uh, it was a short, it was, um, we connected it with Unit 6 a lot, so they were almost just, like, one unit, one big year unit. So thank you guys for watching, I'll be sure to get these videos out by Thursday night before my AP test goes up, and, uh, thank you for so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.